All right, good afternoon, everybody. We are on isometric lesson three, and this one is for sure my favorite. Um, after we've established our foundation of getting our cubes all set in place and just getting accustomed to what it means to draw an isometric view, we are ready to tackle some really fun stuff today. So the first thing I wanna to touch on before we actually start drawing is um, making sure we understand this concept. So I don't know if you know this, but the way to find the center of a square is by simply drawing an X across the surface. So X marks the spot and that tells us the middle. From there, once we have that X marked out, so for example, if I just was to freehand sketch this and I wanted to know where the middle of my X was, even without a ruler, I could simply go like this and X marks the spot, there's the middle. From there, I could take a ruler or I could even freehand and divide this into two rectangles or into quarter quadrants like so. Um, when you're creating a circle, the more um, details that you have, the easier it is to draw. Let me pull this in to show you. This was a book from when I was younger, I love it. And it explains how when you're wanting to draw any type of circle, it needs to touch the center of each side of the square that inscribes it. So in other words, here where we made that mark, the circle must touch. Here on the right edge, the bottom edge, the left edge, always is going to touch those parts of the square. From there, the curve areas, you want to have it match mathematically on all of these sides. So this is a great example. If we were to take this line and cut it into thirds, as you see here, the circle is always hitting just above the two thirds mark all the points around the circle. Now, the more points of contact we have, the cleaner our circle can be. Um, but for this particular project, it's sufficient just to do that. Also notice if we were to take these points of contact and draw another square inside, look what's happening here. All these curvatures are gonna hit inside of those areas. So that's really important to know as we move forward. And we're gonna start practicing that. So if that didn't quite make sense to you yet, maybe by doing it, it'll all become clear. So let's give it a shot now. Um, I'll just show you quickly right here. If I'm touching this edge and the right and the base, and then I've marked off again from the center up two thirds of the way, from the center two thirds of the way, and you see these little notches I've put from the center two thirds out on all of these areas, then I'm ready to freehand sketch my arc and I can continue making sure it touches that box line and where students usually get off as if you're not actually touching the box. You can just simply sketch it out this way. Okay, so even if I'm freehanding, I could just notch top, side, bottom, left, do a guesstimate about two thirds of the way. Notice I'm doing a little curved hash marks for myself so that when I want to put in my circle, I can. Now this is obviously laying flat. When we work in perspective view, or in this case isometric, it's going to look a little skewed, but the concept is still the same. So let's give it a try. So if you can pull out your blank sheet of isometric paper, we're going to use this as a reference and I'm going to do it with you step by step. So let's start off with just drawing a square. Um, we're going to do a cylinder and then we're gonna learn how to half it. So let's go ahead and do a four by four, I'm right here on our notes. So we're gonna go up, one, two, three, four, down four, and then we'll close it off with four on each side, okay? Now if I wanna create a circle in isometric view, it's really no different than what we did here, except now if I was to measure, if this is one, two, three, four blocks, the midway spot is two. So if I had one, two, three, four, I'd put a little notch there for the halfway spot. Halfway on this edge would be right between four divided by two is two. And you'll see I'm putting these little notches just like I would have on this square, showing where that halfway spot is, okay? From here, I can go ahead and put in those little curves, reminding myself that my circle needs to touch that edge of the square. And then we're going to guesstimate that one third area as we walk around and kind of flesh out and fill in 
our circle an isometric view. So it looks a little bit more elliptical, would you agree? Not quite as circular as you would normally see. Now, if I wanna bring that and make walls coming down, what I would do is recommend replicating the same shape directly below. So the way I can do that is I can follow this corner edge and come down as far as deep as I want my cylinder to be. And again, go by four, by four, by four, by four. So this is gonna be the base of our cylinder and then we're simply join the wall. So let's practice this again. Putting a circle in place, if I had four, I divide it in half. So that would be at the two, two blocks over, two blocks over. And then I'm gonna put in my little arcs, making sure I'm touching the edges. We're gonna get lots of practice on this today. And then we're gonna flesh it out. And you're wanting to not come in too quickly. You'll see if students just go like this, it looks a little dwarfed. So you wanna keep that curve running along the flat edge for some time. And again, just continue to sculpt it until it looks good to you. From here, we can take and connect with a straight line. Now we're going off the isometric grid. We're not able to draw exactly on it, although we can keep our verticals parallel to what we see and that helps quite a bit. Now we have a great cylinder, okay? If I wanted to cut this in half, what could I do? What if I took this circle and simply drew a line, cutting this down the center and at the base as well, okay? And then we could have some fun, even if I wanted to erase it and draw my edge. Now I have a half circle. So you'll see, just like with our subtraction techniques on the cubes, we can do the same with our cylinders where we can carve out and cut out anything that we wanna do. If that's hard for you to see, and you're welcome to fill that in with any of your colored pencils, or some students find it helpful to erase the wireframe or the construction drawing. So this original two squares that we drew, that doesn't need to be there, but that's certainly necessary on these training wheel stages. Okay, let's try another one. If we have a cone like this guy, similar to the pyramid, except instead of keeping the base four by four, let's go ahead and put in a four by four base. Okay. Same with the pyramid, we're gonna find that center dot. And if you're still having a hard time seeing that, you could always do this, right? Or even do our little trick we learned about finding the middle by putting X marks the spot. That finds the center of the square. We're gonna go directly above it. That's gonna be the top of our cone but we need to put in our circle within isometric view. So again, if you wanna carve this out with me, I'm making my notches extra large. You don't need to do that, but it helps for you to see video-wise where we're headed. Let's practice these circles and it'll take some time getting used to it until you kind of get a, the feel for laying those in. There's our base. Now I'm simply gonna draw from the top and connect to the farthest edge here from that edge and there's our cone. Now, of course, we could reverse it and make it ice cream cone and with the circle on the top. And then if I wanted to slice it out like we did our pyramid, we could do the same thing. We would just have to keep our ellipse in there consistent, right? It's doing the same thing. It's essentially as if we drew a square frame in there. And then if I wanted to, I could even remove this and just have a truncated shape. Okay, so all different ways you can do that. Now, I love this. Let's start doing a half circle. Maybe we could do some arches and domes. You want tunnels in your land that we're gonna design. So let's start off with a, looks like three by four rectangle. So let's go vertically down three and diagonally down four. Looks like I went too far. Vertically down three and diagonally down four. Now. If I don't wanna put a complete circle in a shape, maybe I wanna do just a half circle. In this case, I'm gonna put a rainbow arch, which is essentially half of a circle. What I like to do is just decide where the circle ends and where I'm gonna have my straight line begin. So you'll notice if I went up one on each of here, I wanna make my straight line begin there. And I want the top or the apex and the peak of that rainbow arc to be right in the middle. So I counted my one, two, three, four, and I put it directly in the center. It's the 
the same concept for drawing the circle, except now we're going to go up, touch that, and you'll notice it looks quite different on this edge. It's longer right on this edge that's closer to your eyes, but that's correct. And if I want to make it deep, I could go ahead and take the same three by four. Let's see, one, two, three. Let's make sure I'm on the same ground line. Let me explain this. So if my ground line is here and I wanna keep it consistent in the back, let's take this edge, go back however far back we wanna put it, start there, that's gonna go up three. So the same thing's happening in this corner. This should end at the bottom edge here. Okay. If it's a little bit tweaked or you brought it over one box on accident, you can always just erase and correct it. I would for sure use a pencil on this assignment. So let's practice that half circle again. It's four blocks cut in half. Four divided by two is two. We're gonna have our apex hit here, but we're gonna stop the curve two blocks down, and then we'll draw this in. So we're coordinating, and they should look quite parallel. But I do think it's helpful when you're learning to go ahead and put in the frame first. Now the top would be here, and the base would be here. And let me just show you a couple of variations we could do. I would recommend erasing our construction lines. That helps a lot of students just see because it gets a little complex with all those lines in place. Okay. Um, I'm also going to recommend this is the very top peak, but your eyes would also probably see a diagonal that's not on the isometric grid from here connecting this line. So you would see mostly, and again, I'm going to erase some of this to show that it's opaque. And this will help you kind of get a better viewpoint. And I would recommend you erase that as well. Okay. From here, we could keep it solid. If we want, we could divide it even further. So say like I wanted to put stripes, as long as they remain parallel, I could continue to do things like this. Or if you remember what we did with the pyramid, we cut out and subtracted shapes. So I could, again, if I wanted to get really complex, after my two stripes are drawn, I could go like this. And now we'd see two arches going back in space. Okay, let's give a shot at this fun shape. This is called an OG. Let me move the paper over this way so it's a little bit easier. Um, an OG you'd see in a lot of more Eastern architecture but it's a similar concept. I'm gonna have us build the frame first. So let's start off with a box that's three tall. So let's go one, two, three by four horizontally and three vertically and close that off. Let's start with the shape first. I think it's helpful when you're learning how to draw. So we have a curve here, almost like an S curve and it's ending again halfway just like our arches did. So we're gonna go and we're gonna do an S curve so when you think of an S, you think of this, but we can soften that and we can slope it it's like so, or we can do it backwards, okay? So an OG is going to reverse this point, so it goes pointy into the S curve and then down below, okay? And if we wanna bring it back, we could simply go back in space, however deep. So if that's my point, one, two, three, and I have to replicate this and make it parallel on the back. So I'm gonna do S curve in the back as closely as I can. Erase my construction frame and voila, it's pretty cool. Now this is paper thin. If I wanted to show that this was more of a tunnel, I could again just parallel this, kind of throw this in. Although not very precise for drafting, it's good for art projects, right? And then we can erase this if we like. We don't wanna have the ground line. And we could take this corner and go diagonally back. Now we're off the grid because our thickness didn't match up, but that works. <clears throat> All right, let's try some bigger arches. Now, if you're wanting to put in, again, tunnels and what have you, let's talk about how we're gonna make them not necessarily half circles, but double thick. So let's do a five by six. So I'm gonna give me a vertical five by horizontal six, and again, horizontal means diagonally down. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, vertically five. For this one, 
because we have six boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, divided by two would give us three. So after the third box over, I'm gonna mark and notch the top apex of the curve, just like we would on a circle, we'd measure that halfway point. For this one though, I'm gonna decide where I want my curve to end, because I could have it end here, but I'm going to mark up one, two boxes from the floor line. And when I draw in the curve or that half circle, I'm gonna keep this straight and then come up to the apex all the way. I'm gonna keep it along this edge and then join here. Now, the reason I know this is true is because these are directly across from each other. So if I wanna keep that symmetry, this and this have to be directly across. And then from there, I'm gonna make it one block thick. I'm gonna keep my straight line stopping there, <coughs> excuse me, and then parallel that curve coming through. And then make any adjustments up here. Looks like I dipped in a little bit too much. If you're not happy with how it looks on the first go, continue to shape it and sculpt it. Let's do the same thing we did for that other half dome last time and do another five by six square. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm making sure that mine is ending and parallel with this. So I'm gonna start at this corner, I'll go one, two, three, four, like this way. And then I know that this frame is lined up. Looks like I made that one too tall. I can see that when I connected it, it was too much. So let's do the same. Six divided by two is the three. There's the top apex. I want this arc to be the same as this guy. So I'm going to keep the flat surface two blocks tall and then begin my half circle. So let's keep this flat. And then we're gonna go and put in our curve here. Come over and down until we touch this edge. And then I like to put the inside parallel curve last. And this one looks even more tweaked. Let's clean that up a little bit. Okay, what could we do with that? Those are just paper thin arches. If I wanted to, we could make them thick so I could take this top curve. Would you like to remove these? Some of you would like to hurry up and get rid of your construction lines, that's fine. But I always recommend building them when you're starting out. And you'll wanna for sure on our final project use some really light ghost line sketching so we don't see those ugly heavy marks on the final project, but for now we'll do that. So if I connect, let's say, let's make them one thick. So maybe I wanna come here, make this one block deep and just parallel. Parallel that curvature and it should be getting straight right around here, right? These are gonna be completely flat lines. And then these are gonna be parallel arches. Now something's looking missing over there for sure. So we wanna go ahead and notice that our eyes would probably see a little bit more of that coming around the bend. Let's try on this guy. So we're gonna come over. Let me show you here, this is the flat edge, right? Looks like magnets to me. Parallel this arch. Do this little area that looks like it's missing. Now it's not gonna come and be as thick on this side. I've seen students do this a lot too, where as if I could still see that entire side, it's gonna vanish from my sight. I'm not gonna be able to see both sides of this. So right about here, it's gonna disappear, right? Then, how thick should we make this side wall? So if this was one block thick, let's keep it the same. One block deep, one block deep. Now, this is probably the hardest part for a lot of students is deciding when does my view disappear? Do I see this and then I keep seeing this? Well, this is what I get a lot and then kids get confused. They think, well, that can't be right. Do I stop it straight up? And then they draw this and they think that doesn't look right. So the way to determine this is usually where this disappeared up on top is the same area where it's gonna disappear below. Okay, so these are lining up. Where it disappeared on the top edge is where it disappears underneath as well. Let's try that again. It's got quite a few marks on the paper. It gets confusing. 
So here, if we disappeared about here in this area, then I should expect it to disappear right below at this area. So let's try that. Let's pull it down. Although I'm not going to make a straight edge, I'm going to soften it as if that's curving down. Pretty cool. So now we've got double arches. <coughs> and if we wanted to make it solid, you could do that too. All right. Now, what if we turn it sideways? I want you to just start playing around with the concept that once we have this concept of circles mastered, we can transform it in so many ways. So let's try not putting the arc on the top. Let's try putting the arc on the side. Um, and I want to try something a little more tricky too. Could you make this one five blocks tall? Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. And let's make it six long. I have a reason for doing this odd number. So far, we've been taking our isometric grid and dividing numbers in half, but if we have five, one, two, three, four, five, and I want to put the apex on this corner, five divided by two, it's not going to be a whole number, is it? It's going to be two and a half. So I'm going to go up one block, two blocks, and put a little notch at my halfway spot, which is now at two and a half, but it's the same concept. So if it helps you, you could turn your paper this way. It really doesn't matter. But I would encourage you to, again, mark where that curvature is going to end. Because sometimes students will start to draw it and they're not thinking, and one curve will end down here, and another curve will end here. And they get frustrated and they think, oh, I just can't draw. But the issue isn't that they can't draw, they just didn't match up where the arc stops and turns into a straight line. So let me show you what I prefer, that when you're drawing it, you're going to notch it out. So on this one, I did three blocks over. Let's keep it the same. I'll put a little notch at one, two, three blocks over. One, two, three blocks over. And those will help me when I'm drawing in those curves to know that's where it's going to end on both sides. It keeps the symmetry clear. And then this is completely flat. And then I start to do my arc. So again, that three blocks is the same thing on that side as well. And then we can come in. Now I'm looking too skinny here, would you agree? So that's where we come in and kind of collect it. If we had a larger grid, we could put more marks to help us keep it cleaner, but that's good for now. If we wanna make it thick, let's go ahead and do three blocks maybe. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Shall we get rid of this guy too? This would be a really cool shape for a building. In fact, I think it reminds me of CalArts. The architect at CalArts did a design similar to this. Um, now, this is where it might get tricky for some of you too. You're thinking, well, that's thick, but where do I deal with this? I like to have students start at the apex or the top of the curve and go back in space. And then you think, well, where do I end it? Do I end it here? Do I end it there? Where's the stopping point? So if you were to go this thickness and simply cut across. Now remember, we decided that this was the straight. It was going to be one, two, three sections straight. So it should go one, two, three sections, sections straight here as well. And then we'll add that last parallel curve for that little bitty, little bitty spot. This was too long. Okay. And get rid of all of these frames. We don't need that anymore. And now we're left with this really cool open C shape arch. Okay, how about this guy in the bottom? Let's go back. Now we decided this was one, two, three lines straight. So look at that. We don't really have a curve to see up here unless you were doing some kind of shading technique. Then you could have some fun with this um, slope back here but just for an isometric view, we don't really see much, okay? All right, <clears throat> before we get into some crazy ones, let's go ahead and do this fun guy because you're not always gonna want an even archway. Maybe you're gonna want some kind of portal or something cool. So let's start off and just do a square. Let's do five by five, how's that? So let's do this guy with a one, two, three, four, five by five. Okay, like so. 
Now, just to get into the fact that not everything has to be a complete curve, but to keep symmetry, we do need to measure. So I can't just start throwing in, well, I could. I could have uneven curves like this, right? But that's not going to look maybe as cool or what you're trying to go for. So if I mark off one block, two blocks, and on the base, one, two, and then maybe I'm gonna decide the apex or the middle is going to be at the two and a half spot. So I counted one, two, three, four, five. I put a little notch, I wanted it one block over. And then I can draw in any kind of curve I want. But it looks good because it's going from the second level to an apex that's been designed back to the second block thick. <coughs> Let me throw some more numbers in there if you're not sure what I'm saying. I wanna replicate this on the other side now. So if I was to go one, two, and make a notch, one, two blocks over and make a notch. And then like we said, we wanted that final curve to be one block thick. So I'm gonna come over one block. I can have a little dot or I can put a mark and then notch, it's like connect the dots from here, two to there. And then I get my equal slopes. Now they're not gonna look completely the same because the viewpoint or the angle is a little bit different but having those marks in place is gonna give us what we need. Now I wanna make it thick. So it might help to get rid of these numbers. Let's go ahead and connect. I'll just make this one one block thick. One block, one block. And if you remember from our last class, wherever it changes surface from horizontal to vertical, that's where we need to show the thickness. So whatever happens in the front horizontal, happens in the back, happens in the front vertical, happens in the back horizontal, horizontal, and this guy is going to be coming in as well. Would I see this one? No, I wouldn't see that unless it's a clear, transparent view. Now I'm left with this and I don't know how to put in that curve. Well, I'm going to recommend that because we have the measurements here that's one block thick on both ends, if I just simply replicate and do a parallel of this, it should turn out rather nice. How's that? Cool. All right, couple more variations before I set you free to do some of your own designs. Let me move this over. And <clears throat> I found a couple of really fun things that I want you to start building from for the project. Um, and it's just thinking of architectural concepts. So when you use this idea of curves, you can go crazy with it. You could have the top be straight and just the inside arched. We could do a pointed arch. We could do one that has a keystone. We could start putting like a mantle or a fireplace. We could put um, edges popping out. We could do a trefoil design where you have three circles carved out or the OG style. So really you can start to mix and match all of these different concepts to try a lot of really fun stuff. So you'll see here when architects are designing, they're just thinking of subtracting different amounts of circles or curves or triangles and creating all the cool shapes. So let's try just a simple pointed arch like this, okay? Or you could think of it like a wishbone or a V. So I'm gonna do five blocks horizontally. One, two, three, four, five. This one I'm gonna make quite tall. Let's make it six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then for the base, I'm not gonna bother drawing the bottom. As you get better at this, you'll realize you don't really need to put in all the information. What did I do here? Because it's five blocks wide, let's mark it off in the middle at one, two and a half. And it decide horizontally where the pointed arch is gonna end and where your straight line's gonna begin. In this case, I made mine one, two blocks tall. And if you want, it even helps me, just put in that straight edge now, like that. And then you can know when you're gonna stop. Let's carve it out. So we're gonna do an arch that comes up to a point here, so we don't necessarily need to do a half circle. Just a whole bunch of variations on this. I like to drop down and put a little notch here to show me where I'm gonna replicate that and kind of test it out. And there we are. There's our really thin, paper thin pointed arch. And again, if we wanna add thickness, let's practice. I erased that because I wanted to give this a little bit more volume here. So to make it thick, let's make this one two blocks thick. One, two from the base, one, two here. 
Now this is tricky, <clears throat> not really on a line, but if you keep it parallel to that upwards duration for two blocks, you should be great. And then just like we had learned before, this is gonna be parallel to here, like so. Okay, this side gets trickier because we know it goes straight for one, two. So let's go up one, two and keep it straight and then we'd start to see a little bit of a curve there. Okay, cool. I hope this is getting easier for you. We're gonna get just a couple more challenging ones and if this is a struggle, you can go back always and practice again. Wish I was there to help you guys in conquering some of the questions that you have, but hopefully the video is clearing it up. Now this is a little uh, heads up where we're headed next. I'm gonna get to you as far as building internal structures and external walls. So I thought about this I'd like us to create two walls and just talk about how we can curve off any, any edge. So if I was to, how do I explain this? Almost like an open book, right? Let's see what I did here. One, two, three, four, five. So let's go up five. One, two, three, four, five. Down five. And just create that chevron V shape. And then we'll make the tall, why not? Make the walls five blocks tall. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you're getting weary and your eyes are like, oh, I can't keep counting this, you can go one, two, three, four, five again. Put little dots for yourself. But we should see that if this is a lower point, then this should be lower, right? Here we can do the same. One, two, three, four, five. Sometimes it helps students to dot that out. That's the inner wall. So imagine, if you will, this is a room and we're seeing two walls in an open space. <coughs> now, maybe I don't want my walls to be harsh like that. Maybe I want an art deco kind of um, more modern looking room. So what if I was to take these and carve off some curvature here? We can do it all kinds of ways, but again, the wisest way is to decide and notch out and say, I want my curve to start here and I want it to end here. And I think that's helpful. So if I did one, two here, let's do the same on this wall. One, two, one, two. This way, when I start to put in my curve, I can keep it going straight until I just barely hit that. Same, keep it straight and barely curve that. So the frame helps me quite a bit. And then you can erase that wire frame I'm gonna erase all of those guys, and you're left with this really awesome curvy wall. Okay, that looks awesome. Now I could curve the base, I could curve this side, anywhere we like. We could even curve the back edge if we wanted to. I could come in here. Although, what would happen if I curved the inside edge? We'd probably have to get rid of this. This line is indicating that it's two walls butting up against each other. So if we soften it and turn this into a curve, we would then need to get rid of that whole line because this would be a softened edge as well. So I just think this is so fun to play around with. Let's try one more side on this wall, cutting off and chiseling. So again, I'm gonna keep it straight and just do a soft chisel here. Now you could change the slope, you could make it more extreme as long as it's consistent on both sides or even on both sides of the building. And then you can come in, erase and clean it up. And you're probably just getting more confident with your line work, I'm sure as well. That takes some time, just getting accustomed to not dragging the pencil, but um, seeing things that way, okay? So we could do curved walls. And the last thing I wanna introduce you to, oh my, this looks really complicated. I hope I'm not scaring you off. This might be a little hard for some of you students, but uh, I didn't wanna ignore it because I think it's a really fun thing you can add to your video game landscape that we're gonna be working on. If it is too hard, just give it a shot and it is an extra challenge one for today. So let's take a look at how we can construct this. I'm gonna suggest that we start with this first okay so we're going to build the frame and if you'll notice 
They're both the same height. So let's go ahead and do one, two, three, four tall by one, two, three, four, five, six horizontally. So start this with me. Um, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four tall, six horizontal, and then four tall, okay? From here, let's mark off the center. Six divided by two is three. So at one, two, three, I made a little notch for the apex. And I'm gonna have us um, make this a little stubby. So I'm gonna only go up two for where one, two, these ends. So notice these are always directly across from each other. I can't say that enough. From here, we're gonna go ahead and make this double thick. So we have the thickness of the wall. Then we're going to put in our U shape. Um, let's come up to the top here. And then we're going to come all the way until we hit this edge, right? Because that's straight all the way over. Okay. <coughs> let's do the matching on this edge. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We want to keep them symmetrical, down four. We have our apex of our peak right in the middle, three and three. And then we're going to notch out the straight edges of the walls and then put in our curve just from this edge up to the peak and down again. So you can see how really critical it is to be marking off these sections because we wanna know that we have parallel curves and parallel straight areas. To create the rest of the dome, I'm gonna have us simply find the center. So this would be the middle area, right? Make a little dot and then give me a great big half rainbow arc connecting this side and do your best to keep the symmetry here. Okay, And then this edge would come up and right over and this edge would come up and right over. Okay. Now, this could have a million variations as well. We could make this longer, so we could lengthen this. Okay, and again, as long as these Vs are staying in place, we can know that it's gonna sit on the ground correctly. Okay, so let's say I'll make it even longer like that. Erase all of our little stripes and our notches. Okay, that's looking great. But we have one problem, don't we? <laughs> the walls are like paper thin. So if I wanted to keep this consistent, you see this V here? We need to do the same here. There should be a V on every one of these columns. So we're going to be going up straight and arching up straight and arching in to where the curve would be. Beautiful, okay? Last challenge, <laughs> directions. So I think what's really cool when I've seen students design stuff um, is they're not only replicating symmetry within their structures, they might even be replicating it within the building itself. So as we looked in a couple examples from before with massing, um, it's really fun to build up shapes like this. So. Give me a chance to teach this one to you. Let's imagine this is a compass, right? I think we talked about this directionally. Let's imagine this is our north, east, south, west, except we're an isometric view. So could you start off with me this way? Let's do our Rubik's cube, nine block space in the middle, okay? So I'm gonna have you Hopefully you have enough space around here. Maybe we'll make it a little smaller. Give me a nine block cube. That's gonna be kind of the hole or the center between it. Now from each of these sections, I'm gonna draw a design that would be mirrored on the opposite side. I'm gonna start off with one, two, three, just three block rectangle right in the middle of that Rubik's cube. So I'm gonna go in the middle and go one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I would like us to put a six block rectangle on top of that. So let's see here if that would mean I have growing out on one side, 
And then if you'd like, go up two and across three. That should give us one, two, three, four, five, six in that rectangle. Now I'm gonna rotate to the east side, do the same design. So I have a rectangle that's three by three, one, two, three, and a six block rectangle wrapping this way. This is really gonna test your perception right now, right? And then we'll do the south end, three blocks. If it helps you to say it out loud, please feel free or at least talk yourself through it in your head, right? So this was one, two, three blocks, and then six rectangle on the end. Let's rotate to the west end, going to the middle of the Rubik's Cube, three block long rectangle with a six. Okay, and then we've got all these dots <laughs> all over my artwork, but I'm not gonna stop there. I want us now to chisel out a shape that has a curve. So once we have this in place, let's try something really fun. Could you go from this corner edge to the middle of that six block? And I want us to put in a diagonal from this corner, always to the middle, all the way around. So from the inner corner to the middle, inner corner to that middle line. And walk all the way around northeast, southwest again from the middle to that middle edge inside corner to the middle of that six block. Now we're getting some really cool designs, but I'm still not done. I want us to make a curve. So if this is three blocks wide, one, two, three, and I cut it in half, it's gonna be at one and a half. So now I'm gonna put a little notch at one and a half, right in the middle of each of these rectangles, and we're gonna put a curve in. So I'm gonna arch this, from that diagonal curve, curving it like so. Curving until I hit the apex and I'm always staying and touching that inner rim of the box. Now, if you didn't think that was cool enough, now we're gonna make it three dimensional. So right now we have these flat shapes. I'm gonna get rid of my middle area. You guys have been doing great. This is a long time to focus, but hang in there. I'm gonna erase my frame. If you'd like to erase your dots, all these things that kind of were our training wheels to help us. Okay. Now we could do this with any shape imaginable. I just wanted you to understand the concept of being able to count out the grid and place things how you'd like them to be. Now, if I wanna make this have depth, I could either grow the shape up off the ground or I could put the walls coming down. I think that's much easier. So we're gonna take each of these shapes and we're gonna go down one block, one block. Every corner where it changes, even here where it went from this to the diagonal, I need to go one block down. At this corner curve, one block down. This side I'm not gonna see and here on the curve I won't see it. So let's do our parallel here to there there, parallel. Now on a diagonal, it's the same. Keep it parallel, just like that. Connect the dots. Now on this shape, it's going to look different as we work our way around this shape. So let's keep it diagonal down. This one, the diagonal down, we're going to see on both edges of this curve, aren't we? So now, looks like this straight line is going to be paralleled until I can't see it anymore. And this curve, or this arc that we drew, is gonna be paralleled. Love it. All right, so on this side, let's do our south end. One block down, one block down, one block down. Keep this straight because this above is straight. Mimic this curve right here below. And the last one, our west, down one block every time we have a change in direction. This one we're not gonna see back here, are we? So we're gonna keep this. And you guys did it, diagonal, diagonal, amazing. So just to see that we can take any of these guys and then we're gonna start getting really creative with being able to sketch basically anything you can imagine. And the next time I see you for our, our next lesson, we're gonna talk about massing because we wanna take all that we learned about cubes, pyramids, cones, arches, and start putting them together in really cool combinations so you can make an amazing landscape. So I can't wait to see what you guys do. I hope this has been fun and eye-opening. 
it's certainly going to help you draw anything you want to in life and it's certainly going to help you be able to be a better designer um, and come up with more ideas when you have a better vocabulary of all these different forms and shapes you can come up with anything so love you all miss you hope you had a great time can't wait to see these final projects coming up take care